Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, as part of our ship comparison series, we're going to be comparing the Alaska class large cruisers to New Jersey. In the past, we've compared exclusively battleships and arguably one battle cruiser in HMS Hood. I believe she's a fast battleship. Uh, so why are we jumping out of that and describing a cruiser? Well, uh, even though the United States called the Alaska's cruisers, uh, they are all big gun capital ships, similar to battleships and battle cruisers. And that is a nuance that I would like to discuss today, uh, along with some of their uh, comparisons. These ships are really interesting because they are one of the only unrestricted ships that uh, the United States builds during the war, and most countries for that matter. Uh, and they begin life, or the designing process, I should say, with the Baltimore-class heavy cruisers, which is a design the U.S. Navy really liked. Uh, and they took that design and looked at uh, these ships were not held under the Washington Naval Treaty. But if we were to take this ship and make it even more powerful, what would we do? Uh, and so th this is definitely a part of the cruiser design lineage. Uh, but as often happens, it starts to converge into the battleship design lineage. And uh, the final design for this ship ends up with 12 inch guns, which traditionally is a battleship caliber, not at all a cruiser caliber. So let's look at the numbers first off. The Alaskas are about 30,000 tons standard displacement, which makes them only 5,000 tons lighter than North Carolina and South Dakota class battleships. Uh, in fact, fully loaded, they top out just under 35,000 tons, which was the maximum for battleships allowed under the Washington Naval Treaty. So these ships are almost battleship weight. Uh, they're heavier than most World War I battleships, and they're only a little lighter than most World War II uh, treaty battleships. In terms of size, they're larger. The Alaskas are 808 feet long, only about 80 feet shorter than New Jersey, uh, and significantly longer than either the South Dakota or North Carolina class battleships that preceded them. They're only 92 feet wide, which makes them incredibly narrow and gives them a, a really good length to beam ratio for high speed. This also means that they have virtually no torpedo protection, which is very much in line with a cruiser, but not at all in line with contemporary battleships that had as much as 20 feet of their width on each side dedicated to torpedo defense. Uh, they have a draft of about 30 feet when fully loaded. Uh, because of their long length and narrow width combined with a single rudder, which is another common feature in, in cruisers, and less so in modern battleships, uh, they are not particularly maneuverable. So not only do they suffer greatly if they were to take a torpedo, they can't really get out of a torpedo's way. Um, at, at 33 knots, they have really, really good speed. They basically, to speed up production of these ships, they took the power plant from an Essex-class aircraft carrier, which is a comparable weight uh, and, and size to these, and dropped it in. And it was a very effective propulsion plant, uh, and, and it worked very well. It got these ships up to the speed they needed to be at. And it was basically an off-the-shelf item that they could reuse. Uh, in fact, the compatibility with Essex-class aircraft carriers even led to uh, the Navy looking at converting these ships to aircraft carriers, which they did with a number of classes of ships in 1942 when the pre 
dominance of aircraft carriers became clear and uh, the United States started losing aircraft carriers, especially at, after the Battle of Santa Cruz when we had no operational aircraft carriers, had to borrow one from the British. Uh, check out our video on Santa Cruz in the description below. So these, uh, they, they seriously looked at putting, taking off all the guns and stuff for these ships, which were still only constructed up to the hull, uh, and putting a hangar and flight deck on top. And then they figured that purpose-built ships were significantly better, that uh, because of how narrow these were, they couldn't actually carry that big of an air group. Uh, so for a ship the size of an Essex class carrier and the cost of an Essex class carrier, you're getting significantly fewer aircraft. Uh, so that wasn't worth it. Instead, they built them as quasi battleships, which carry even fewer aircraft than that, which made them pretty useless uh, in the modern Navy. Uh, and so these ships are only in commission for about two years. The Navy lays down six of them. They, they plant, they get six authorized, they lay down three. Alaska, Guam, and Hawaii. Alaska and Guam are cl completed during World War II, uh, get into the war by 1945, uh, and are mothballed pretty early on in the peacetime Navy. Hawaii is real close to being finished, but there isn't a need for her in the post-World War, post-war world. So they leave her uh, basically on the building ways so that uh, she, she's a good, large, fast haul, compatible with the modern Navy that can keep up with the aircraft carriers. Uh, so, so they look at, over the next couple of years, a number of design studies. Do we make her a command ship? Do we put missiles on her? Uh, and because they already had the hull, it would have been a fairly cheap conversion, all things considered. But she would have still been a large, expensive ship to operate. And so, in the end, she was never completed and was scrapped after decades of sitting around. The other three ships, uh, Samoa, Philippines, and Puerto Rico, were never laid down and, uh, of course, never, never uh, served beyond that. All of these ships are named after territories, which is real interesting in the U.S. Navy's naming convention. Battleships, of course, are named after states. Cruisers are named after cities, with larger cru cities tending to be heavy cruisers and smaller cities tending to be light cruisers. So these ships, named after territories, fall right in between battleships and cruisers. Alaska and Hawaii will be the only big gun capital ships named after those future states, because while we were building battleships, they were just territories. They had not yet become states. Now, let's look at some things that uh, these ships did really well during their short life. One, they had great anti-aircraft guns. Because of their long length, they were able to spread anti-aircraft guns all over the ship. Uh, they had 56 40 millimeter guns and 34 20 millimeter guns. And because they had a single funnel, the, those guns had pretty good arcs of fire. They had really long foxels and quarter decks, so they were able to uh, line guns up all over the place in addition to putting them in the superstructure. They had a cruiser-style secondary armament of five-inch guns, uh, which means that even though they only had six twin mounts, whereas a battleship would have ten, they had uh, one mount forward, one mount aft, and two on each broadside, which means they could fire four mounts on each broadside and three ahead or astern. Uh, the battleships could fire five on each broadside, but typically only two ahead or astern. So these ships had a much more efficient secondary battery that, that was not too uh, too far below that of a full-sized battleship. They had the speed to keep up with the carriers, and so these ships made tremendous anti-aircraft escorts, especially at the end of the war when the United States was operating off the coast of Japan uh, under constant threat of kamikaze attack. These ships did a heck of a job defending our carriers, and when carriers took significant hits like Franklin, 
these ships were detailed to escort those crippled ships um, and protect them because they could no longer protect themselves. Uh, in terms of armor, again, the armor is significantly heavier than, than what a cruiser could carry, and it is sufficient to stop any existing cruiser-sized guns, uh, but it's inferior to what battleships carry and certainly couldn't stop a 16-inch shell, uh, much less smaller, older battleship caliber guns. They had a 9-inch belt. Uh, they had a 4-inch deck. The Iowas have a 12-inch belt and a 6-inch deck. And they had an inch and a half thick bomb deck above that four inch deck, which is the same size that the Iowa's had. Uh, so their, their armor is almost on par. Their barbettes are 13 inches thick uh, and their, their turret face plates are also that thick. So thick enough to stop their own 12 inch main battery guns. Uh, and they have a 10 inch armored conning tower which uh, is kind of on the light side, but the U.S. Navy is starting to move away from the armored conning tower concept at this point. The big feature of these ships is their 12-inch gun. Rather than reusing older 12-inch guns that were in the inventory from the World War I period, the Navy designed a brand new 12-inch gun and a brand new super heavy projectile for it that was arguably more effective than the World War I era 14-inch guns that the older American battleships were carrying. Uh, so, so these ships had arguably battleship level firepower, at least as far as the older battleships go. Uh, and the simple truth is there were a lot more old battleships out there than new battleships. There just wasn't time to build a bunch of new ones in the interwar period because of the treaty restrictions. Uh, so possibly these ships could have stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with an older battleship. They had the speed to choose the range. Uh, they, they had reasonable armor. It wouldn't really stop any projectiles that hit directly, but uh, it was pretty good. They wouldn't take as much damage from a projectile as a cruiser would. Uh, and, and they had the firepower to do damage in return to defeat older battleship's armor. Why did the Navy make these white elephants? Uh, well, because of the treaties, the United States had some inferior cruisers going into World War II compared to the Axis powers. The U.S. didn't believe in arming its cruisers with torpedoes, thought they were more of a liability than an asset. With American torpedoes, that's true. With Japanese torpedoes, that is not entirely true. So the Japanese had some really effective cruisers that were better than what we had. Uh, and the U.S. really looked down on Japan, didn't think they had much indigenous shipbuilding capacity, even though they had built their own battleships before and were building Yamato and Musashi at this time, larger than anything that the United States built. Um, we thought that the German Scharnhorst class battleships were being built for the Japanese Navy, or that that design was going to be given to the Japanese, uh, and the Shorn Horse we're going to cover in a future video, stay tuned for, for updates on that, but these ships had 11-inch guns, uh, and they had battleship-level armor, but nobody knew that, everybody thought that they were more in line with the traditional battle cruiser concept with armor that only protected against their own guns. Remember the rule of thumb, you armor your ship against the guns you carry. If they're building a ship with 11-inch guns, it probably only has 11-inch armor. In fact, that's not true. The ships were designed to be rearmed with 15-inch guns, and so they were armored against 15-inch guns. Uh, and in some place, places, their belts were thicker than the belt of Bismarck. Uh, and, and they were high-speed ships. So the United States feared that these would be powerful commerce raiders in the hands of the Japanese. And if the Japanese didn't take Scharnhorst from Germany, well then they would develop their own. And in fact, the Japanese did start some designs uh, for uh, large cruisers comparable to the Alaskas. But rather than being the impetus for the U.S. building the Alaskas, when the U.S. started building the Alaskas, 
the Japanese decide to respond with their own. Uh, so that shows you how good Western intelligence was in Japan at this point. These ships, even though they're white elephants and were kind of the only ships of their type built, um, were far from the only ships of their type designed. They were part of a design trend that was extremely multinational at the time. Uh, so between the German pocket battleships of the Deutschland class that were heavy commerce raiders and the Scharnhorst class, which were believed to be commerce raiders and not line of battleships, uh, the French, Dunkirk and Strasbourg, which were not full-size battleships. They had something like 13-inch guns, uh, so they, they couldn't fight true modern battleships, but they were great at killing cruisers. And then the Dutch were about to build a number of battle cruisers or cruiser killer type ships. Uh, the Japanese, of course, had their designs. The Russians had a design for a super cruiser armed with battleship caliber guns. Uh, so this really was a trend. What do you call ships that fall under this trend? Uh, the traditional breakdown has been that we have battleships, which are slow moving, heavily armored, heavily gunned ships, and we have battle cruisers, which as designed were part of the battleship lineage. They grew out of the armored cruisers, which were the fast scout units of the pre-dreadnought era, but they were an off branch of the battleship lineage to replace the job that armored cruisers did. They carried battleship caliber guns, but not as many as a battleship. Uh, so for example, the first dreadnought, HMS Dreadnought had 12, uh, excuse me, had 10 12 inch guns. The first uh, British battle cruisers had eight 12 inch guns. They drop a turret to save weight. They also drop armor plating. They have armor to protect them against cruiser caliber guns. They're not worried about protecting themselves against battleship caliber guns. And this gives them a much higher speed. They're, they're able to have uh, more engine packed into their design. They tend to be longer and narrower. Uh, some battle cruisers are even larger and more expensive than battleships. By the end of World War I, the trend was that these ships were coming together and you get the fast battleship out of that, a ship which is significantly heavier than older battleships and can combine firepower, armor plating, and speed all in one design. And that's what the Islas are. They, they are fast battleships. They have battleship level armor, they have battleship sized guns, uh, and they have cruiser level speed. So the battle cruiser concept dies. However, some navies consider to or continue to use that name whenever they're referring to fast capital ships. Uh, so, for example, the Royal Navy calls Hood a battle cruiser, even though she has battleship level armor. Uh, she is a fast battleship. They call Scharnhorst a battle cruiser, even though she is a battleship with undersized guns. Uh, this is partially because they didn't know how heavy her armor was and assumed it was lighter, but because she was a fast capital ship, they would have called her a battle cruiser, even if they knew what her armor was. Uh, they called Dunkirk and Strasbourg battle cruisers, even though the French tended to call them more uh, battleships, and, and really they are they are sort of light battleships, which was another trend at the time. Uh, we'll cover that in a future video when we get to them. So I believe that ships of this design, World War II era ships that have heavy guns, light armor, and high speed, are not actually battle cruisers anymore. They do not have battleship caliber guns. If this ship had been built with 16 inch guns, that would be battleship caliber. Being built with 12 inch guns, something between a cruiser and uh, a battle cruiser, or a, a cruiser and a battleship, is not uh, either a cruiser or a battleship. It is not a battle cruiser either. Uh, so I propose that cruiser killer is the term 
that should be used here uh, for ships like Dunkirk and Strasbourg, uh, Alaska, and uh, the many other designs by foreign nations that never got built, but were in the same vein. They're not full battleships. They're much larger than cruisers. They're designed for a similar job, commerce raiding and hunting down enemy cruisers, uh, but they are not true battle cruisers like the World War I name. Uh, so that's just my opinion. Feel free to discuss it, drop a comment, let me know what you think about that distinction in the comment section down below. Uh, also, let us know if there are other ships that you would like to see discussed in this. I, I dropped a couple of uh, proposals in this video. We'll get to them in good time. Uh, th this, the reason we're doing the Alaskas today is because that was being discussed elsewhere in the discussion session or section of our, our YouTube channel. And uh, I wanted to weigh in with my thoughts on it. So comment, tell us what you want to hear about. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And check the description down below for ways you can support the channel. Uh, ways you can support the museum that runs the channel. Thanks for watching today.